Hello. Hi, Darren Alf here from BicycleTrainPro.com. I am in the backyard of my house right now, and I'm in the backyard because right now, at this point in time, there is a scary worldwide illness going around, and I know that a lot of people are trapped inside their homes, unable to go out on the bicycle tours that they were wanting to do right now. So I thought that this would be the perfect time for me to talk about one of the strategies that I discuss inside my book, The Bicycle Terrain Blueprint. This is my 400 page guide that will teach you how to conduct your own bicycle touring adventures anywhere in the world. Short bike tours, long bike tours, whatever you want to do, this book will teach you how it's done. And one of the strategies that I discuss inside this book about how to mentally and physically prepare for your upcoming bicycle tours is to pack up your bicycle like you were going on a bike tour and then to go camping in your own backyard. And so that's what we're gonna do today in this video is I am gonna camp in my own backyard and I'm gonna share with you why this is so important to do when you are planning and preparing for your own bicycle touring adventures. So there are three main reasons I recommend camping in your own backyard as a way of preparing for your own bicycle tours. And the three main reasons you wanna do this are, one, you wanna learn how to use your gear, especially your tent, your sleeping bag, and your sleeping mat. So you're gonna be testing those items out. Two, you're gonna get used to the camping experience. A lot of people who go bicycle touring do not have a whole lot of camping experience and it can be very difficult to transition from sleeping in a normal bed well, on a very comfortable mattress to sleeping on the ground on a not so comfortable mattress and in a sleeping bag. So you're gonna get experience camping in the safety and comfort of your own backyard. And then three, you are going to figure out which items in addition to the camping gear you actually need to bring on your bicycle. So while you're camping in your backyard, you're gonna be paying attention to the other items that you are using, and you're gonna be making notes as to which items you actually do use and which items you do not. So this is why you wanna pack up your bicycle in much the same way that you were going on a bicycle tour, with all of the gear, clothing, camping equipment, cooking gear, etc., etc., so that over time, you camp in your own backyard, you know, one time, two times, three times, and over time, you start to narrow down the list of items that you actually need to bring. Maybe you thought you needed to bring, um, you know, two fuel canisters for your stove, but after a while you realize, oh, these canisters are lasting like two weeks at a time. There's no re real need for me to carry two whole fuel canisters when I'm traveling on my bicycle. And then so you'll cut out one canister and you'll eliminate that weight from your bicycle. Or maybe you discover that your sleeping bag isn't warm enough and you need to go out and get a warmer sleeping bag or warmer clothes to sleep in at night. These are the sorts of things that you can learn from camping in your backyard that you want to learn now before you actually hit the road. And you don't want to wait to learn until the first day of your trip and you discover that you don't know how to set up your tent or your sleeping bag is too cold or you have too much stuff on your bicycle. You want to learn these lessons now while you are home so that when you do hit the road you have everything with you that you need for your adventure and you are comfortable with the camping experience. So inside my bags here I have my rear left pannier stuffed with all of my camping equipment so all of my camping gear is here. I have a warmer winter sleeping bag. It's uh, winter right now. It's March, but it's still pretty cold. So I've got my warmer sleeping bag. I've got a tent. This is the Big Agnes Copper Spur HV Ultralight One Man Tent. And then I have my sleeping pad. And this is the REI Flash Inflatable Sleeping Pad. So that's what I'm gonna be using today. I'm gonna to set all of this up right here in the grass in my backyard, and then I'm gonna sleep out here tonight. Before I set up my tent and everything, um, I'm just gonna grab my jacket. It's getting kind of cold. It's about, I don't know, 5.30 at night. And this is the perfect time for me to be setting up my tent and everything because this is probably the time of day that I would be setting up my tent if I was out on a bicycle tour. You know, I would have spent the whole day cycling and then about this time of day I would have reached my campground 
and I'd be preparing to set up my tent. So it's perfect time of day to set things up now. Now it is, it, it does look like it could rain here at any moment. And that's another thing that I should talk about when it comes to camping in your own backyard. You don't want to wimp out when it comes to camping in your own backyard. When you're on a bicycle tour, you can't control the weather. You don't just wait around for sunny days. You have to go no matter what the weather is. And so when you set the aim of camping in your own backyard, you should set the aim of camping in your own backyard, whether it rains or snows or whatever it happens to be outside, you should go and do it. So today it looks like it could rain at any moment, but I don't care. I'm gonna set up my tent and I'm gonna camp in the backyard. So the first reason that you want to practice camping in your own backyard is to build up some experience with your camping equipment. And one of the things that trips up most beginners is setting up their tent. If you've never set up a tent before, um, it can be a little tricky. And you don't want to be setting up your tent for the very first time on a bicycle tour, especially if it's raining. Um, that's the worst possible time to be setting up your tent for the first time ever. So you want to be able to set up your tent very, very quickly. And the only way to do that is to practice setting it up before you actually hit the road. So uh, learn how to set up your tent before you go on your bicycle tour and you'll feel a whole lot better, uh, much more confident when it comes to the camping aspects of your trip um, before you hit the road. I've actually heard from some of my Bicycle Train Pro readers in the past who did not heed my advice and they did go off on their bike tour without having ever set up their tent um, and they just went out and bought a brand new tent and they were planning to set the tent up for the first time when they got out on the road and and when they did that they discovered sometimes that like the tent poles were missing from the tent that they bought so they went out on their trip and they didn't even have poles to set up their tent. So you gotta, you gotta go over all this stuff before you hit the road to make sure your tent works, make sure all the parts are there, make sure you know how to set it up, etc., etc. So this is the Big Agnes Copper Spur HV Ultralight One Man Tent. This is a tent that I have owned for a couple years now and have been using on my bicycle touring adventures all around the world. It's a very good tent and it's not a cheap tent. Uh, I think this tent costs about 400 US dollars to buy brand new. But it's very small, it compacts down to a very small size as you saw, it fits inside one of my rear panniers along with all of my other camping gear. It's very lightweight. I like the fact that it has like a stealth green color to it so I blend in with my surroundings because I do a lot of like stealth or wild camping where I'm camping out in the forest and I don't necessarily want to draw a lot of attention to myself so the color is very good. It's got a good rain cover over it so even if it does rain or snow I will stay dry inside and overall it's the, a perfectly designed tent for bicycle touring. It is a one-man tent, so it's a little small on the inside, but it's it's far bigger than I would need. And I, I'm over six feet tall, so I'm, I'm actually quite tall. Um, people are surprised at how tall I am when they meet me in person. And this tent is more than big enough for me. So if you're on the bigger side, um, this tent is gonna be more than big enough for you as well. Many people who are new to bicycle touring think that maybe they should bring a hammer in order to drive their tent stakes into the ground each night. And this is honestly like one of the most common questions I get from people who are new to bike touring. Should I bring a hammer or an ax or something like that to chop firewood with? And my answer is no. <laughs> in 20 years of biking around the world, I've never needed a hammer or an ax to drive my tent stakes into the ground. I've camped in forests and deserts in all sorts of situations um, and I've never needed a hammer of any kind. I usually just push my tent stakes in with my hand or my foot and if I do need to, to hammer those tent stakes in, I can usually find a rock, a brick like that, 
um, something like that nearby that I can use to drive those tent stakes into the ground. So there's never been a need to carry a heavy hammer on my bicycle for the small act of driving my stakes into the ground. Just don't need it. Don't pack a hammer. Please don't pack a hammer. One more tent stake and then we'll be done with the tent. All right, there it is. That is the tent. I have it all set up. It's the bicycle over there. Now, when you're camping, I don't usually leave all my stuff on my bicycle. What I do is I bring the stuff inside the tent with me. So right now, I'm going to set up the um, sleeping mat and sleeping bag. That's the first thing. So there's the sleeping mat and the sleeping bag. But then I'm going to bring all these other bags inside the tent with me because I wouldn't want to leave these out. Let's say I'm in a campground with a whole bunch of other people. I wouldn't want to leave all my valuables on my bicycle overnight. What I would do is bring all these bags inside the tent and I store them inside the rain fly here. So I'm going to open this up so you can see, but I put my pannier bags over here, all four of them, in there, and then I usually bring my handlebar bag inside the tent with me. You'll see that in just a moment. So if it does rain, my, my bags are safe here. All my stuff is in the tent with me, so I don't have to worry about someone stealing it. And then I would lock up my bicycle if, again, we're pretending that we're in a campground, but I would lock up my bicycle maybe to this pole right here so that when I was in my tent, I could just simply peek my head outside of the tent, look over here and see that my bicycle is safe and secure and locked up to this pole. I just want to point out that I've basically stripped my bicycle of anything valuable. So I've taken all of my panniers off, I've taken the handlebar bag off, took my smartphone off, I even took the bike computer off here um, so that nobody would steal these things uh, off of my bicycle during the middle of the night. There's no lights on the bike, nothing. I leave the water bottles on there because who would want to put their mouth on a water bottle that I've already put my mouth on. And then I would normally lock my bicycle up maybe to this pole right here and i'm not going to actually lock it up tonight because i'm camping in my own backyard but in in a real life scenario where i was camping out in the forest or in a established campground or something i would lock the bicycle up for sure and then over here i'll just give you a quick tour of how i have things arranged inside the tent so as you can see i've put down the sleeping mat and the sleeping bag and then i've piled up my panniers here so i have the one pannier that had all my camping equipment is now empty and flat and so i put that one on the bottom 
Then this one, I usually have my computer and stuff in this pannier actually, and my drone and things like that, but that's not something that most bicycle tourists are carrying. Then in here I usually have my clothes and my food. So these are two things that I would want to access uh, while I was inside my tent, my food and my clothes. And then inside the tent here, you can see, I'm gonna try to position myself here. I brought my handlebar bag in here. I usually have my wallet and my passport and my camera and stuff like that. My smartphone uh, could be in here as well. And then over here in the pocket on the side, I've got my smartphone, which I would probably want to have access to while I'm inside my tent. I've also got the bike computer. Um, like I said, I took this off of the bike so that no one steals it. I usually put that over here. And then I also usually put the bike lock key inside this pocket as well. So all of those things always go in this one same place. Uh, each and every time I am packing up my tent or my bicycle so that I know that like that's where the computer is. If it's not there, it's on my bicycle. Those are the only two places I store the bike computer or the bike lock key. It's in this pocket or it's in the bike lock itself. The computer is in this pocket or it's on the bike itself. And then up here, I usually put like some, I usually put like trash, like, I don't know what these are, straps, and there's a sticker or something from the last time I was camping. Um, but all of that is trash right there. And then on this side, I don't know, I put my sunglasses or something, you know, I like I'm wearing my glasses now, I usually put them up there like that. And I would put my bike light up here as well. I use my bike light as the, the light inside my tent. I don't carry a separate light just for inside my tent. So I'm using my front or rear bicycle light as the light inside my tent. And that's how you want to act when you're bicycle touring is you want to have as many things as you possibly can serve two or more functions. You know, you don't want to have one flashlight for your tent, one uh, headlamp that you wear when you're cooking, and two bike lights. Like all of those things are kind of the same thing. And so you want to have one thing your bike lights function as all of those things. You can save yourself a lot of weight um, and space when you're packing by simply having one item that performs multiple functions. Okay, so I was just talking about lights and then I realized where are my bike lights right now? I have no idea. Normally I carry my lights inside this rear pocket on the outside of this rear pannier, but at the moment there's nothing in there. Um, and so where are my lights? I don't know. And this is one of the benefits of camping in your own backyard before you hit the road is like I am obviously not organized in the way that I normally am when I hit the road. Um, so I gotta go and find my bike lights. I don't know if they're inside my panniers or if they're up in my room or where they are right now, but this is the benefit of camping at home is that okay like I didn't make a major mistake on the first night of my bike trip and, and I went with no lights um, I can fix the, the problem now by simply running inside my house going up to my room and trying to find my bike lights where are these things I have an idea of where I put them I think they're in this little electrical bag that I have but I'm not 100% sure And here it is. This is my front bike light and it's not charged. So there's another thing. Again, the benefits of camping at home. You need to have these things in a position where you actually know where they are. And two, it's not charged up. So I got to charge it up right now and make sure it's charged when I hit the road on my bicycle tour. Okay, I'm going to plug this in. And then this goes into here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's charging now. And on the long block. What's the long block? Okay, yep. Oh, this is the part I hate about walking the dog, is the stopping. Sniff, sniff, sniff every little damn thing. You're, you're in my video, Dad. Yeah, I can see. 
<laughs> I'm making a video about camping in the backyard in preparation for a bike tour. Yeah? How many times do you think I've camped in the backyard? Oh, quite a few actually. And what's your bike riding experience? You well, haven't been in very many of my videos. I haven't uh, been on a bike ride for very long. I barely can go around the around the neighborhood here. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah. I've only seen you ride a bicycle twice maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe twice. Yeah. Well you're lucky you didn't see me fall off the bicycle. Uh, yeah. Why do you not ride a bicycle? Well, let's put it this way, my balance isn't very good. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm a little worried about Especially if I was in traffic, that I might veer over and run into traffic, and that'd be the end of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, that's a good story, I guess. Do you want to say why your balance is not very good, or no? Well, yeah, because I had a stroke when I was 38 years old, and it affected the balance portion of my brain, which is the cerebellum. And ever since then, uh, my my balance has been affected by it. So even when I'm walking right now, I'm kind of <laughs> walking a little bit like a drunk person. Uh, and as I get older, it seems like it's getting a little bit worse. But uh, I'm still hanging in there. Yeah. Just don't do too much bike riding. Yeah. Like my adventure son here. Yeah. We've done some camping trips though. We went when I was, what, 13? And we did that, third, what was it, 10 day, 11 day yeah. camping trip in the Sierra Nevadas, we did together. Yeah. And was, I don't know. After, that was after I had the stroke too. Yeah, that was after you had the stroke. And I remember, because we were hiking down these like narrow hiking trails and going over rocks and stuff and it's hard for him to just walk on the sidewalk let alone walking on crazy and that was terrain. Scary. That yeah. was scary. I, I was afraid I was going to lose my balance and fall off a cliff or something so I had you walk right behind me because I knew you had a, have a really good balance and if I started to to fall backwards to catch me because we were going up these steep, steep hillsides with big boulders and stuff. And it was, it was kind of scary. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't easy hiking. It was like off trail hiking. Oh, off trail, yeah. <clears throat> so we've we've gone on some adventures. Yes, we have. Yeah, we've had some adventures, and then there was the <laughs> infamous hike that we went on. I know where he's going with this. <laughs> you know where I'm going with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where we, we hiked in, we had big old backpacks on, and we hiked out, and uh, we're gonna go for a couple, just a couple of days, and we were with... This uh, was on the Pacific Crest Pacific Trail. Pacific Crest Trail, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's when we went with... Uh, Tom and Christy or something. My, my sister Christy and, and her husband Tom, your Uncle Tom, and uh, they were doing fine, but... That night, I had such horrendous pain in my neck and down in my arm that uh, Darren still teases me about how I was moaning and groaning all night long. He was like, oh, I need a pillow! And I, was like, I can't, I can't go any further in the morning. I just suffered through the night. And, and it was freezing cold too, yeah. So it's just a miserable, one miserable night of camping did us in. That was, that was it and I we had to hike back out of there and I couldn't even carry my backpack. I was so messed up and so Darren carried both of our backpacks. <laughs> That's right I carried one on the front and one on the back. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah so that but, was, this, but yeah so that was a failed camping expedition. Yeah, that, that didn't go very well. No. That was our last camping trip. <laughs> But but this is why I'm making this video about, we have to stop for the dog again. I'm making this video about camping in your backyard and like how, how you can learn all these lessons from camping just in your own backyard. 
you know what I mean? Right. And one of the benefits to doing this is that you learn how to camp. Because so many people are new to bike touring, but they're new to camping also. And camping is just one aspect of bicycle touring. And camping by itself can be difficult for a lot of people. Not to mention riding a bicycle long distances on top of that. You know what I mean? Right. You gotta practice that too. You gotta practice your camping. And how it's gonna work for you. And you, you do that a number of times in our in our backyard to get get ready for your experiences yeah. on the bike. Uh, and so it was a gradual learning experience for you, but but now you're uh, <laughs> you go any place in uh, all kinds of weather and everything. Amazing. Kid from Southern California to be able to <laughs> even camp in the snow. <laughs> yeah. You know, and bike in the snow, oh my gosh. All right, so my light has been charging for several hours now. It should be good. Yep. All right, I'll take that, take that. It's a little after midnight right now, and I'm gonna go out to my tent. I've been inside, I was writing the newsletter that I send each and every week for Bicycle Turn Pro. Um, so I was writing the newsletter and doing a bunch of other work. And now I'm gonna go out and camp inside my tent. So I'm gonna turn the light off here and head on outside. I'm in the dark and I have my light here that I was charging. Okay, there it is. So. I'm using my bike light as my light so that I can see. Here's my bicycle. And again, I don't have it locked up, but if I was actually in a campsite somewhere, I would lock it up overnight. But because I'm camping in my backyard, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lock it up. And here's the tent, and you can see there's quite a bit of moisture on the tent already, just dew from the air, look at that. Um, so the tent is already wet. And everything in here is just as I left it from earlier in the day. There's my water, the panniers, and... Okay. So... I'm gonna close this here. Can you see me? <laughs> okay, so I'm inside the tent now. Um, what I normally do is I put the light up here and then I just kind of let it go like that. And then that light lights up my tent just enough that I can see everything that I need to see inside the tent. I usually angle it this way so that I can see everything kind of over this direction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change into my pajamas. I'm just wearing my normal clothes that I would be wearing in the evening if I were camping. So I've got pants on and my long sleeve shirt and my jacket and stuff. I'm going to change out of these clothes inside the tent here. I have my pajamas all ready to go. They're inside my panniers. I'm going to pull those out. I just have like a pair of fleece pants that I sleep in at night and a t-shirt and those are my pajamas and so I'll change into those really quick and then climb inside my sleeping bag. <laughs> you gotta get in the practice closing this uh, mosquito netting because yes there are mosquitoes out there there are the mosquitoes are out tonight and they will surely be out when I'm on my bike tours I've learned that for sure I don't know how many mosquito bites I've gotten in my lifetime but it's it's a whole lot <laughs> so anyways Another tip if you are planning to camp on your bike tours is that before it gets dark, 
try to pull your pajamas out of your pannier bags and put them inside your tent so that you can easily grab them once it is dark. You don't have to be like searching around inside your pannier bags. You just grab them because they're already right here inside your tent and they're ready to go and be changed into. It's a whole lot easier to do this during the daytime, dig your pajamas out of your bags during the daytime than it is to do it at night. So um, that's what I'm doing here. Just gonna change into my pajamas. Okay, so I've changed into my pajamas now. I've put my jacket over the pajama top because it was kind of cold. There are wild animals, even though I am in a suburban neighborhood, there are some wild animals out here. Um, I used to have a wildlife camera, like a motion activated camera, and I set it up here in my parents' backyard uh, several years ago. And on that camera, I was able to capture, well, several of my neighbor's cats roaming through the yard. Uh, I was able to capture raccoons, owls, possums, rats, um, what else? Lots of birds and things like that. So there are a few little wild animals, but nothing dangerous that's going to come into our backyard. The only potential danger, dangerous thing that could stumble into our backyard is like a drunk homeless person that's like high on meth or something. And <laughs> my mom is a part of like this Facebook group for the neighborhood and where they post like things that are happening in the neighborhood and just yesterday last night somebody posted a video from their ring doorbell of some like guy that was he looked like he was drunk or high on drugs and he was like trying to get into somebody's front door and I think I, I saw the video but it looked like the guy was just like confused about which house was actually his like he's like is this my house or is this not the guy was out of it you could tell so um, there are a few little scary things that happen like that every once in a while but I should be safe camping in my parents backyard for the night so I'm gonna just lay down now and get inside my sleeping bag um, this is my warmer winter sleeping bag I have two sleeping bags like a, uh, a you know, a not so big or thick sleeping bag that I use during the summer. And then I have a warmer one that I use during the winter months. And this is my warmer sleeping bag. So I should have no problem camping here in Southern California with my jacket on and this warmer winter sleeping bag. Oh yeah. Like, I am so comfortable inside my tent, it's kind of unbelievable. Like, I've spent so many nights sleeping in here, like, this is my home. And as soon as I lay down, I'm just like, oh, this is the greatest place in the whole world. I freaking love it. So, I know that a lot of people do have trouble camping, but once you get used to it, feels so good and I, I honestly love sleeping on the ground I love sleeping outside the smell of fresh air when you're sleeping is so nice and I miss that when I'm indoors and sleeping in a regular bed I miss the smell of being outside so so much all right guys good night I'm going to bed Let's click my light off and adios So I'm laying in my tent right now, just kind of listening to the sounds outside. And there's a street light over here, so that's why you can see some light coming into my tent. Um, but I can hear the train going past in the distance, and I've heard several squeaking sounds coming from this direction over here, just to the right of my tent. It sounds like a, like a mouse, maybe, or a rat, potentially. Um, I'm not sure how to, it just sounded like squeak, squeak, something like that. Um, that was a terrible impersonation, but that's what it sounded like. <sighs> oh. 
lot of birds outside and I can hear, I think it's the freeway several miles away, just like a low hum. Uh. <laughs> Checking what time it is. Okay. It's 6.57 in the morning right now. I think I'm going to get up. This is far earlier than I like to wake up. But I don't think I'm going to be able to go back to sleep. It's going to get hot out here. And there's going to be more noise. And I'm awake. So. Uh, a lot of condensation on the lens there. Oh, man. My hair is a mess. I slept pretty well, actually. I only woke up like two times when I had to like roll over, change sides. Otherwise, I slept all through the night. So, man, my hat, I need a hat. Alright, so I just spent the evening camping in my own backyard. This is something that is both fun to do and is an exercise that you can use to help yourself plan and prepare for your own bicycle touring adventures. If you want to learn more about how to conduct your own bike tours, whether they be bike tours close to where you live or bicycle tours on the other side of the planet, be sure to pick up a copy of my how-to book, The Bicycle Touring Blueprint. This is the book that thousands of people from all around the world are using to help them plan, prepare for, and execute their own bicycle touring adventures. Once again, you can pick up a copy of that book on my website at bicycletourningpro.com forward slash shop or at biketourbook.com. All right, guys, that's it. I'm Darren Alf from bicycletrainpro.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you out on the road sometime soon. Bye-bye.